Loyola has chosen its new president. See how this historic selection is moving the university forward. And Sodexo Dining Service gave their workers a pay raise. Learn why union organizers say the move is not enough. And as spring rolls into New Orleans, so does festival season. Experience some of the sights, sounds, and smells unique to New Orleans. Wolfpack News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Wolfpack News. I'm Caleb Moya. And I'm Devin Cruz. Loyola's new president is making history, and he hasn't even started the job. Dr. Xavier Cole will be the first black person to lead Loyola, and he says he's excited to work with students to expand their educational opportunities. The Loyola community gave a warm Wolfpack welcome to President-elect Dr. Xavier Cole. Welcome to the Loyola family. Cole will serve as the university's 18th president, and he is making history as the first black man and second non-ordained person to be president in the university's 111 years. I am so honored and excited to be selected for this role. The incoming president carries 28 years of educational administration experience. Mm -hmm and most of that time was spent at Jesuit institutions. Presidential search committee chose Cole over 40 applicants and seven other semifinalists. He embodies the Ignatian ideals and I can't wait to see how he moves the university forward. Chairman of the committee, Robert LeBlanc, says he was drawn to the incoming president's optimism. He um, doesn't necessarily see a challenge as an impossibility, he sees it as an opportunity to learn and grow. The president-elect says he is particularly focused on uplifting underrepresented students. When I was at Marquette, I started an orientation program specifically for first-gen students that introduces them to each other, their families to each other, and pairs them with mentors and our faculty and staff. Cole says he will investigate Loyola's enrollment, physical plant resources, and relationships with faculty and staff once he takes office. There's not many things more important than taking care of the people who take care of our students, and so that will be a number one priority. President Cole will join the Loyola community on June 1st. He's excited to work with students to better its Jesuit education. Reporting for the Maroon, this is Ray Wahlberg. Cole will wrap up his position as Vice President for Student Affairs at Marquette University in Wisconsin before he heads to the Crescent City. Dozens of students celebrated incoming President Cole at the event Friday. Reporter Gabrielle Carine is live at the Dana Center right now asking students how they feel about the incoming president. Students seem excited. Many express that Dr. Cole more accurately represents the student body here at Loyola. Here is what they had to say. The first black African American president, I think that's amazing, including at a Jesuit institution. I think that's really powerful and amazing. And it's a different change. Yes, and it's a different, it's a different change, you know. Dr. Xavier, that, that's his name, he, uh, he gave a nice speech and it was just, it was short, but it was, it was really nice and I like, I leaned over to my friend and I was like, yeah, he's going to be good. We need more like people of color like in those type of positions and it just kind of sucks that like it hasn't happened sooner, but I'm glad that it is like happening now. Yeah, I feel like we need someone that's going to be like permanent, <laughs> um, not like someone like in between. I'm really excited. I think... Hopefully he will be a really good fit to our school. I feel like he will be also because he's um, into music. Um, and I feel like the school has a big music program and like arts is like really big part of the school. So Wolfpack News will continue to make updates as Dr. Cole transitions into his role. Back to you in the studio. Many students told Wolfpack News that President-elect Cole represents Loyola's diverse student body. Thank you, Gabrielle. And there's another change in leadership on campus. Provost Tanuja Singh is leaving Loyola next year. She will become president of the University of Indianapolis. 
Singh, has joined, has, Singh joined the Wolfpack three years ago. According to the Board of Trustees, she brought stability, stability to the university amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Father, Father Justin Daffron will serve as the interim provost until the position is filled. And Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards visited Loyola University's campus to talk about his relationship with leadership and faith. Reporter Dominique Tolliver looks into what the event brings to the Loyola community. Politics and religion can be controversial topics, but Governor John Bell Edwards sat down with students to address them head on. Hosted by the Canizero Center, the event was created to show students that they can integrate their faith into their work life like the governor has. I think it is so important for students today, especially to hear the governor talk so openly about his faith so that they can see what a life of integrity looks like. One of the missions of Loyola is really to seek the truth and to live the truth. There's been no blessing in my life that, that's been uh, better, stronger, more important than the Catholic faith. I think of myself as a Catholic Christian first, an American second, and a Democrat no higher than third. Edwards said the polarization in society and social media have made it difficult to be in politics. I really believe that there is a sizable majority who want people to get along, work together, and accomplish things. It's just you wouldn't know that if all you do is just consult so social media. Governor Edwards said students should reach out to their elected officials and make them aware of the changes that they would like to see. If you will establish a personal relationship with those individuals and then let them know what you're thinking on the issues, it will make a difference. This has been Dominique Tolliver reporting. Some students at the event raised their concerns about transgender rights in Louisiana. They asked the governor what he will do to protect trans kids. Governor Edwards responded by saying that he voted, vetoed the bill attorney jo General Jeff Landry proposed which prevents transgender girls from participating in sports programs across the state, but the bill became law in June of 2022 without the governor's signature. More money in the pockets of Sodexo food workers here on campus. They received a 35% a 35 cent raise, but not every worker is happy. For example, Samantha Henroy has worked with Sodexo since 2017. In seven years, she received two raises. Many Sodexo workers on campus are now quitting. They say they aren't being compensated properly. Henroy said she considered quitting, but she is staying there for her employees. Loyola senior S.J. Hay has advocated on campus for the, for the past school year to raise awareness for pay raises. Hay also pushed for Sodexo workers to unionize. And the workers have just, we care about them, you know, and we want to make sure that they're getting compensated for their labor, that they're able to go home and spend time with their families and not work a second shift, a third shift, two more jobs just to, just to survive. Stay with us for updates on the employees' fight for higher wages from Sodexo. And the New Orleans City Council voted to approve up to three short-term rentals per city block. The move could impact renters, including college students across the city. Owners will now have to enter a lottery system to get short-term rental license approvals. This is instead of the original first-come, first-serve system. Most STRs in the city are illegal, according to data from the Jane Place Neighborhood Sustainability Initiative. And some people say it makes the housing market more expensive. City Council, J city Council President J.P. Morrell says the city is working to regulate the short-term rental market. As a council, are fed up with greed and platforms abusing the system. What you see today from us is our last best effort, in my opinion. If it comes back yet again with these greedy platforms that they refuse to be regulated, we shall be the sort of Damocles and there won't be short term rentals in the city of New Orleans. I'm done. If an STR landlord violates the new policies three times, they will lose their license from the city, according to the new legislation. A taste of New Orleans has made its way on the campus. I caught up with faculty and students about their thoughts. Most students stop at the C store for a quick snack or a quick lunch, but now they're serving a New Orleans classic, Hubix Pies. Hubix Pies is back. We need to give Hubix Pie back. Kathy Gibson is the supervisor for retail. 
She made sure the pastries made their way back to campus. We actually used to sell Hubic pies in the store when, before, before Katrina. Loyola student Emma Pond says having the pies on campus makes her hunt for the iconic treat easy. They're really hard to find at gas stations, and I come here more often than not. And Hubix pies are really, really good, and I miss them so much. On top of being more convenient, Gibson says there's one special rule the C store doesn't follow that most stores do. Because they limit you there to one. Here, you can have the whole tray if you want. The pies come fresh to campus with a special label, Wolfpack Pies. Gibson says it makes it unique to Loyola. Doesn't that make you feel special? It does. That's, it the, does. That's, that's the point of it, just making you feel like it's a part of you when you have a pie. You can expect the pies in the market every week. Workers say the pie should arrive on Thursdays or Fridays. It's party time again in New Orleans. A look at the sight and sounds of the Big Easy. And see how a group of local kids made a lifelong relationship in Ghana. You're listening to the Delta Blues legend, Little Freddie King, performing at the New Orleans Jazz Museum. This was part of the Tennessee Williams and New Orleans Literary Festival, celebrating their 37th year. Italian Catholics across the city gather to celebrate their heritage and the Feast of St. Joseph with food, parades, and masses. The Italian community built altars for St. Joseph featuring pictures of lost loved ones, decorated candles, and plates of traditional Italian cuisine. It's a celebration of St. Joseph. Uh, it's a beautiful day. The Italians get together, they march through the street, and uh, you can sing and dance and even be kissed by an Italian. Those altars are beautiful. I love going out there. They're always so nice. And speaking of St. Joseph's Day, I went out to Super Sunday and learned a little bit more about what the Mardi Gras Indians actually do on St. Joseph's Day. It's the music, the parades, the people, but really, it's the culture. And nothing screams New Orleans culture like Super Sunday. Allow me to introduce the Mardi Gras Indians. The ones that bring us Super Sunday. There's nowhere else in the world that has this kind of culture and has it this densely packed. Because you're going to see like the best of, of everything in New Orleans and what it has to offer within like these three blocks. As for what it's like to be a Mardi Gras Indian, we'd have to ask one ourselves. Dr. Ansel Augustine is a former Mardi Gras Indian and now works to help make sure that other Indians can make sure Super Sunday happens. Um, the hours, the months, the almost a year of time that it takes to make these suits, uh, the time that it goes in where it's from Indian practice where we're doing something that goes back to Congo Square in the in, uh, generations ago. You know, being a part of this is an honor and a privilege. The Mardi Gras Indians work year round on suits like these. They can weigh over 50 pounds and they march through the uptown area just to show them off. Here's a few examples of what these suits can look like. But as for all the hard work that the Indians put forth to make sure this day happens, it's all worth it for the sake of New Orleans culture. To quote one of the chiefs, I believe it was uh, Big Chief uh, Daryl Montana that says this, to be a part of the culture, you gotta love the culture. Cause there's a lot that you give as a person to be a part of this that's never really gonna be recouped. It's the give and the take between the Indians and the community that make this happen. I think for me, is the joy you see from the community. You know, when you're walking in your suit, uh, it's, a, it's a spiritual experience. So when you put on your suit, when I put on that crown, when I paint my face, when I'm out there singing those songs, you know, you're transcending. You're not, I'm not Dr. Ansel Augustine. You know, I'm medicine man. This has been Kayla Moye reporting. <laughs> I love 
loved, I loved that one. Those suits take nearly a year to make, so they put them to good use. The Mardi Gras Indians were also in the Treme Creole Gumbel Festival yesterday, performing for the, and performing and dancing for the community as well. Wow, yeah, those, those were quite a sight. And over the weekend, Ferret Festival showed what Uptown has to offer. With cool art, music, and delicious food, many of the businesses on Ferret were able to show the community why they should hang out on Ferret. Like Sweet and Boozy, an ice cream shop that uses alcohol in their ice cream for adults. The festival allowed the new business to meet new customers. It's given me an opportunity to actually to meet more of the people in my community and let them know exactly what we're doing here um, and what we have to offer. So the, fe the fe Ferret Festival was a blessing. Wow, I have to give me some of that Boozy ice cream. Yeah. Where do they sell it at? Do you know? No. <laughs> okay. Well, the Son of a Saint Mentorship Program took 20 high school students across the world making friendships and memories that they will never forget. Reporter Eve McFarland was able to hear about the unforgettable experience. Imagine this, leaving your hometown city to fly more than 10 hours to another continent with your brothers and mentors to get an experience that you will never forget. Son of a Saint, a nonprofit mentorship program that works with boys who have absent fathers, got the chance to change their lives by taking them on a trip to Ghana. We, selected, we hand selected 20 high school mentees and then we had four chaperones with us. Taking this trip was a huge eye opener for everyone. It was fun to see these local kids waiting um, by the doorstep, waiting for our boys to, you know, get in, take a shower, eat, and then go back outside and hang out with them. So they got to experience, you know, um, a livelihood where there's nobody judging them. It wasn't easy or like their average vacation. Not only did we experience the culture, we felt the heat, you know, like, like, I'm telling you right now, some nights you feel like it was 150 degrees. That's how hot it was, right? You got to smell the smells. <laughs> you got to experience everything that the locals were experiencing as well. So it was truly a cultural immersion. These young mentees were able to rebuild the local basketball court and assist in schools and tutoring, as well as teaching them the American language and culture. They all embraced the opportunity to you know, engage with these um, local kids and just seeing the interactions between our boys and the local kids um, was really, really exciting to watch and I was very, very glad and happy that um, they had that experience. This is Eve McFarlane reporting. For more information on how to donate and support Son of a Saint, go to sonofasaint.org. Extreme weather events devastated the Gulf South this weekend. A tornado swept through a small town in Mississippi, killing over 20. President Joe Biden has sent federal aid to the hardest hit areas like Rolling Folk. The storm lasted longer than an hour. West Georgia is worrying about the same storm hitting tonight. Georgia's governor has declared a state of emergency to address the potential damage. And as we continue to follow the weather going on in Mississippi, here's the weather we have going on down here in New Orleans. Uh, today we've been having cloudy skies and light rainfalls with temperatures in the high 70s and as this front continues to pass into tomorrow be sure to keep out your rain gear as we are expecting thunderstorms for tuesday by wednesday the storm should clear out just in time for the annual wednesday at the square concert series held at lafayette square it's going to be a bit cloudy and in the high 60s wednesday so if you do attend the event be sure to bring a light jacket just in case the weather will continue to increase into Thursday and will be in the 80s by Friday, just in time for the Hogs for the Cause Barbecue and Music Festival held at UNO Lakefront Arena. Keep an eye out if you are going to the festival because on Saturday there is a 40% chance of rainstorms, which will be cleared out by Sunday, leaving us with partly cloudy skies and temperatures in the high 70s. And as we look into next week, there will be thunderstorms again next Monday. That's the weather for this week. This has been Jonathan Whitehead reporting. Back to y'all at the desk. And coming up, see how one of Loyola's tennis players is smashing cancer at one match at a time. And the Pels are fighting for a playoff spot. We'll look at Saturday's showdown. Here is where your story continues. Stretch the limits of your imagination. Create the world as you see it. One letter, one word, one pixel at a time. Move to the rhythm of your own story. Make something more. For him and her and them, for the world. Do what you love. Tell stories like never before in state-of-the-art recording news and editing studios.
created just for you. Learn skills that will never expire. Document moments, seconds, frames per second. Turn them into masterpieces. Creativity is more than a lifestyle. Make it a career. Tune into the sounds around you. Those notes, you are always meant to sing them. Creative boundaries, you are always meant to break them. Become the creative professional you are destined to be at the Anchor Institution for the Creative Economy. This is a stage, a world stage. New Orleans, Culture Rich, Loyola, hands-on access. Make the next move, perform, and work immediately. We do things differently. Use your creativity to impact society. Expand your mind. Be with and for others. Continue your story in the College of Music and Media at Loyola University, New Orleans. Kicking off sports here, and we're starting on the baseball diamond. On Friday, the eighth-ranked Mobile Rams beat the Wolfpack in the first game of the series, 14 to 11. Saturday, there was a much better turnout for Loyola, with the Pack beating the Rams to claim their seventh straight three-game series. They won 12 to nine to start the day off, ending the day with an 18 to one win over the Rams. Tomorrow, the Wolfpack hosts Dillard for a non-conference matchup at 5 p.m. One Loyola student is taking philanthropy to the net. This weekend, Loyola Jr. Isiliano hosted Smash Cancer. Emma Smithers has that story. Junior Isiliano is hosting Smash Cancer for the second year in New Orleans. Smash Cancer is a 12-hour tennis-a-thon that I started in 2019, um, originally in Miami, Florida. And it's basically in honor of my paternal grandfather who passed of acute myeloid leukemia in 2013. The first few years were in Miami and then ever since I came to Loyola, um, I've been hosting it in New Orleans ever since and this will be our second year. All of the funds that are raised are donated to the Stand Up to Cancer Foundation. We raised, I want to say now, given the donations we have this year, a total of $20,000. So it's successful I would say. The event is on March 26th at City Park and is open for anyone to watch. The first six hours we have um, high schoolers come and play. They have an opportunity to play with um, our own men's and women's tennis team and then the second half is when the rest of the athletic department comes in. I mean it's something very near and dear to my heart. This has been Emma Smithers reporting. Now if you'll excuse me I've got some cancer to smash. As Emma said, this was the second year for the event. Make sure to be on the lookout for information on next year's fundraiser. Shooting over to basketball, the LSU's women's team is headed to the Final Four after beating Miami 54-42 to last night. They will play the winner of tonight's game between Virginia Tech and the Ohio State Buckeyes. That game will take place in the first round of the Final Four tournament on Friday in Houston. The Pels also had a great weekend. They won 131 to 110 Saturday night against the LA Clippers. This win has boosted the Pelicans' rankings to ninth in the West, making them eligible for playoffs. They'll face the Portland Trailblazers tonight, with that tip-off set for 9 p.m. at the Rose Garden in Portland. Thanks, folks. That's all for sports. Stick with us for more. A Treme restaurant is feeding its customers mouth-watering bites and classic books. How Melba's is serving literacy. And it's all about that bass at this one competition. We'll take you to this city park competition. At Melba's on Elysian Fields, they are serving up smiles. But what you might not know is they're also bringing world-famous authors and national leaders to the New Orleans community. Melba's is known for its world-famous po' boys, seafood, and connected laundromat. But when they're not serving up hot-boiled perfection, they're serving up delicious books. Well, that means I'm doing something right. This Ninth Ward restaurant 
hooks you up with a bite to eat and a book to read. Just buy a book and get a free sandwich or maybe a daiquiri. You can get a free book. You can get a daiquiri while you're reading your book. You can get some good food while you're reading your book. I think it's awesome. Nationally known authors and leaders like the Clintons are brought in to tell their stories. Now we're very proud of the Clintons coming here and um, we, we lucky and that was a beautiful day. We all had a good time. Sign and give out free books. Other great reads are for sale. Some you can even find in a vending machine. And when we put that book uh, machine over there, the little boy came up and he said, oh Lord, they got books in a case. Oh, I got to get me some of them books, and then we told him how to program go. Melba's co-owner, Jane Wolf says that it's a restaurant literacy project for everyday people. Most people in this area do not have 10 books in their house. We've given away 20,000 books with over 100, 130 authors participating. The program here has even made national headlines. The Scholastic Organization has donated over $5,000 in books. For Melba's, this is a chance to help their community while feeding it too. A lot of people say they have a Melba's bookcase now, so that's pretty cool. The program here at Melba's, it's something different. Like my pull boy, it's fully dressed and bound together with love and French bread. Alexis Marini reporting. For an up-to-date list of the weekly authors, head to Melba's website. City Park fishermen battled to reel in the big one Saturday. Caleb, I heard you checked it out. I did. I caught up with a few competitors who told me that they compete every year. Take a look. I'm currently standing in City Park where the Big Bass Rodeo is about to happen. Let's get to fishing. The sound of fishing line and splashing waters fills up the park. And it happens to be reeling in a ton of people for the big event. I've been doing it ever since legitimately I was an infant. My dad's been taking me out. We've been doing it as a family forever, and now I'm getting friends involved. So, we, it, legitimately 20 years plus. For me, this is my first year. This is my first time out. These two aren't the only ones out here, though. They brought some help for the team battle. We're a team of five. We are a team stop, drop, and reel. We've been doing it for a hot minute. We got our own shirts and everything. We, we're out here. But for those without a team are going for something much bigger. And by bigger, we mean bass. So what do you hope to win? The grand prize, you gotta go big. You gotta go a little bigger than this. Either to get your fishing on, learn about some wildlife, or go for the title of angler of the park. Everyone comes out to have a good time. The Big Bass Rodeo happens every year in City Park. So come on out, and maybe you'll catch you one of these. This has been Caleb Moye, reporting. So I gotta ask, how long did it take you to get that fish? It took me an hour and a half to catch that <laughs> fish and to get that shot, but it was, it was worth it, it was in worth the end, it. yeah. How big was it? I mean, that was, a, that was a big fish. I didn't even get to wait. It was a big fish, right? You saw it. Yeah, it was big. Did you take it? Did you did take I, take, it home? I did not take you it can't? home. You can't? You have to return it? No, I, I, I put it back in the water. Oh, okay. All oh, right. well. That's, that's about enough time. Uh, that's the news for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to download our app to stay up to date with all our news. Have a great day.